Welcome, everyone, to this edition of your miracle moment. That's right. This is your miracle moment. I am Dr. John David Kirby, and once again, I want to thank you for joining me for this miracle broadcast. You know, it's just such an amazing truth. Supernatural miracles. To think that God, the almighty God, the creator of the ends of the earth, is so concerned about you and me. That Jesus Christ came to give his perfect sinless life. To bleed, to die, and then to gloriously, triumphantly raise from the dead. So that we can be saved, healed, delivered, and live a life of freedom, victory, prosperity, fullness through his perfect sinless sacrifice. And that signs, wonders, and miracles are performed that show forth, think about this, to show forth the love of God. You know, there's a lot we could talk about concerning miracles and why miracles or what's the purpose of miracles or the purpose for miracles. But one thing that I love to say is this. Miracles are the love of God on display. Every healing, every miracle, every deliverance, Every conversion, act of salvation is the love of God on display. And I'm here to tell you as a bona fide, legitimate witness that he loves you today. Maybe you're sitting out there, you're watching this on your phone or your, your computer and you're, you're thinking, how could God love me? I mean... The things that I've done, the places I've been, situations I've been involved in. You know, maybe God would love someone else that was better than me or hadn't committed the acts that I've committed. But the truth is, the biblical truth is that God loves you. And you want to know an astounding truth? God will never love you any more or any less than he loves you right now. Isn't that amazing? I mean, maybe you're watching today and you've never given your heart to Christ and you say, well, you know, wouldn't God love me more if I was a believer or wouldn't God love me more? No. God loves you exactly as you are now. Even if you're not a believer, he still loves you. But you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, many people today are shunning away from preaching the truth of heaven and hell, and God and the devil and life and death and eternal separation from God and the Lake of fire, a lot of preachers are turning away from preaching on sin or acts of unrighteousness, afraid of being canceled or vilified. But it doesn't negate the love of God. Maybe you've heard someone say, how could a loving God send someone to hell? Well, the answer to that is simple. God doesn't send people to hell. People make their own choice. So literally then, people send themselves. Think about the authority in that. You know, one of the greatest truths concerning authority is personal authority. Did you know that you have the authority where you will spend your eternity. 
Think about that. You have the ultimate authority over the decision. That's right. The decision of where you spend your forever. You can choose. God said, choose this day. Choose life. Choose death. Choose God. Choose the devil. Choose heaven. Choose hell. You choose. See, way back in 1985, January the 3rd of 1985, I chose. I made my decision. I made my choice to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I received him. I made the decision concerning my eternity. I chose Jesus Christ. Today, you can choose him or you can refuse him. See, that's something so spectacular. You know, we often talk about mankind, men, women, boys, and girls being made in the image and likeness of God, Genesis 1, 26. But see, the Bible teaches us that the image of God is spirit. God is spirit, John 4, 24. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, man is spirit, soul, and body. So the image of God is spirit. The likeness of God is soul. And what makes soul so important? What makes the soul like God is the ability to choose. Having a choice. The actual ability to choose. Not some kind of a programmed computer or robot. But actually having the choice, the ability to choose is a phenomenal gift. See, when God created man and woman in his image and likeness, he didn't want them to love him because they had to or they were programmed to or that they were forced or coerced. See, love can never be forced, coerced, manipulated, purchased. Love is a genuine response of the heart. I remember when I had a supernatural encounter with the living God. The word was spoken. The word of God from Revelation 3.20. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Standing at the door of your heart and knocking. This is Revelation 3 verse 20. In the Holy Bible. If anyone hears my voice. Opens the door. I will come into him. And fellowship with him. And he with me. When I heard that. Something happened to me. That word pierced my heart. I found out later it was a Hebrews 4 verse 12 experience where the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword. That word pierced my heart. The Bible says it divides the spirit and the soul and the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Well, that word pierced my heart. And I remember just simply saying, he wants me? I was blown away by the revelation of the reality of Jesus Christ. He became real to me in that moment. 
Now, I'd grown up in our family church, a mainline denomination as a young person, teenager. But I didn't know him. Oh, I said, yeah, of course I believe in God. You know, I, be I believe, I believe. But I wasn't born again. I said I believed in God. But I did not know God. That's the difference. You know, maybe you're watching today and say, you know, well, uh, I've gone to church all my life. I've been a, a part of our you know, family church or religion or organization. But do you know him? See, this is the truth of biblical scriptural Christianity. It's not just saying I believe in God. It's I know him. You know, the old hymn really says it all. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. I was blind. But now I see. That was penned. After a supernatural encounter. With the living God. And I'm here to tell you today, right here on your miracle moment, that God wants to give you a supernatural encounter. Maybe you're watching, you say, well, if God wants to do this, why doesn't he just do this? Because he's waiting for you. See, I'm just the messenger bringing you the good news today. That the Bible clearly says, whosoever shall call. Upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Delivered from death unto life. I'm here to tell you as an eyewitness that Christianity is not just a religion or a tradition or going to church every Sunday. Or saying prayers before dinner or bed. It is a living reality of a relationship with the living God. To know him, to experience him, to encounter him. I'm here to tell you. He's waiting for you. And today I want to ask you to stay with me on this program. Stay with me because I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. But before I do that, I want to just take a moment and welcome everyone that's tuning in. Oh, it's so nice to see people from around the world tuning in. Wow, we have France, we have Florida, we have uh, someone I don't know where you're from, but God bless you. Please let me know. Please let me know where you are watching from. It's such an honor to have you with me today. Muriel, Stephen, Julie, God bless you. I thank God for every one of you. Uh, just scrolling through to welcome everyone. Mike, God bless you. Welcome. Great to have you with us. Anita, God bless you. Welcome. It's always such an honor to have people tuning into this program. You know, we believe in miracles. But not only do we believe in miracles, we expect miracles. You say, well, how could you be so sure or so certain or so confident? I have two answers for that. Number one, the Bible says so. The word of God is a literal Miracle manual. If you take the time and study, study the Old Testament, study the New Testament, it is a book of the miraculous. Think about some of the great stories of all time. Think about one of the classics, 
Moses parting the Red Sea. Friend, that's not a fairy tale or some kind of a make-believe fantasy. The word of God is the truth. God caused a strong east wind to blow all night, walled up the waters of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. That's a miracle. For a sea to part and millions of people to walk across and not even get their feet wet or muddy, that's a supernatural miracle. The sun standing still in the sky. Miracle. An axe head floats. A miracle. A sundial goes backwards. It's a miracle. God's word is a book of miracles. Not only the amazing, astounding miracles of the Old Testament, and there are many to the amazing miracle ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. You know, when you study Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you look at the miracle ministry of Jesus Christ. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame man is walking. You know, it's just such an amazing revelation when you begin to study the life. I mean, look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if you were today just even from an intellectual standpoint and study, if you were to take time and study what we would call religious leaders from whatever religious background or situation, line them up side by side, line up the lives of each of these Religious leaders. Look at the life of the Lord Jesus. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. I mean, even if you looked at his life only from an intellectual, soulish standpoint. Look at the life of Jesus. What was the greatest earmark, characteristic, quality of the life of this man named Jesus. Love. Love. What stands out as the greatest characteristic of his life? Love. The word of God says, greater love has no man than this. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. No other religious leader. No other quote unquote religious founder willingly lay their life down. See, there's been arguments and speculation and accusation over time. Who killed Jesus Christ? Who murdered Jesus of Nazareth? The Jews killed him. The Romans killed him. The true answer? No man killed him. Jesus said, I lay my life down. He said, no man takes my life. 
I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. Friend, that's love. The greatest love of all is personified in the life and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about this. What Jesus did on what we call Passion Week, his willful surrender to go to the cross, when he prayed that night in that garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, not my will, but yours. Not my will, but what thou wilt. Not my will, your will. Surrendered to that horrific experience that goes beyond human understanding. It goes beyond the defining of our oratory and our ability to explain the mock trial, the high priest, Sanhedrin, standing before Pilate, brutally beaten by soldiers, forced to carry that cross beam on his bloody back, strung up, hung up, spiked in hands and feet to hang for six hours hours in the most excruciating pain that no man can truly adequately describe or explain to have a crown of thorns thrust into your skull some theologians believe that some thorns were even nine inches long crammed into the skull of the savior When you begin to contemplate, I mean, even if you were to take the time and just simply study from an intellectual standpoint, religious leaders, who can compare? Who can compare? There is no comparison. On the basis of love alone. You know, many religions, if you would study them carefully, you'll notice that there is a continuum. There is something that unites them. It's fear. Fear. If you don't attend, this will happen. If you don't do, this will happen. The relationship that God offers man is simply receive. Did you know something today that your salvation is not based on anything you can do? No way to earn, no way to deserve, no way to purchase, no way to get good enough to appease God. No amount of offering or sacrifice, no amount of self-torture can earn the affection of God. Jesus says, just receive. Salvation isn't something you do. It's something you receive. Oh, isn't this amazing? It's so hard. This is one of the greatest challenges for humanity today. 
One of the greatest challenges for humanity is the ability to simply receive. The pride of man is such a powerful force. Pride, arrogance, self-will. In simply humbling oneself to receive. Why is there such a struggle? Why is there such a battle? Why is there such a conflict between just simply receiving? Well, for one reason. Because of the inherent sinful nature of man. Man always wants to do it his way. And that's the classic, classic example of religion. Religion is man trying to reach God man's way. Religion. Is man trying to reach God man's way? Relationship is God reaching man God's way. Here's the choice. My way. God's way. You can choose your way. You're free. Man has been made in the likeness of God with the ability to choose. Every person has the ability to choose. And that's the way God set it up. I'm encouraging you today to allow the Holy Spirit to touch your heart. To allow the message of the gospel the perfect sinless son of God, the spirit conceived virgin born Christ came to this world to bleed, to die, to become the perfect sinless lamb, the final sacrifice. For God to be appeased and man to come back into fellowship. But in all that, it always comes back to choice. Today, I pray you will hear, sense, perceive, feel the Spirit of God calling you. Calling you to come to Christ. You know, maybe you're watching this program and say, you know, I used to go to church when I was a teenager or a child. And maybe you're watching and say, you know, I went to a church camp one time. There was a preacher preaching, and we all went up to the altar and we knelt at these wooden benches. I prayed to receive Jesus in my heart. Maybe you were in an old time tent meeting, an old tent revival somewhere in the country. Some preacher gave an altar call, an invitation to give your life to Jesus. And maybe you walked down a sawdust path, knelt at an old rickety wooden altar and said, Jesus, come into my life. But maybe you've gone astray in your adult life. Maybe you've wandered from the path of righteousness. Gotten involved in things that maybe you shouldn't have. Maybe you're looking at me today and you say, Preacher, would God want me? I remember we were preaching in the wonderful country of France. 
a very wealthy man looked at me. He has so many properties and money and all the things that money can buy. He looked at me. He said, do you think God would want me? And I said, of course. And we prayed. And God touched this man. And he was radically touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. My answer is an emphatic yes. He wants you. Maybe you're sitting there and you say, you know, what has God ever done for me? Or maybe you're sitting there today and you say, you know, where was God? Where was God on 9 11? Where, where was God at Pearl Harbor? Where was God at any catastrophe or calamity? Or death of a loved one, loss of a family member. Where was God? How come God didn't stop this tragedy? How come God didn't stop this shooting or this mugging or this horrific event? One thing I've learned in decades now of walking with God, He's waiting for us. See, there's been a great tendency to focus on an aspect of God that's called sovereignty. The sovereignty of God. And often people will equate sovereignty to God will only do what God wants to do when he wants to do it. Period. That we must have to sit back and wait. We're, we're all at the complete mercy of God. There's nothing we can do. With that, there's also a doctrinal teaching. It's often called Calvinism. Or the doctrine of predestination. Which simply says, God knows who will be saved, and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, of course, God knows who will be saved. He knows the end from the beginning, and the beginning from the end. He is the first and the last. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But he commissioned us, the church, to go and make disciples. He commissioned us to go and tell the good news. He commissioned us to preach the gospel to win the lost. He said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John 3, verse 3, Jesus said, Ye must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven. You must be born of water and the Spirit to see the kingdom, to enter the kingdom. You must be born again to see. You must be born again to enter. You see, I don't get this born again stuff. What do you mean born again? Born again means to have a spiritual resurrection. A spiritual resurrection. Because the Bible teaches us that man, going back to the original sin 
in the Garden of Eden where the woman and the man both chose to disobey God, ate of the forbidden fruit. Since that time, the spirit of man has been dead. And we must have a spiritual resurrection. That's what it means to be born again. That the spirit of the resurrection would breathe life and resurrection into our dead spirits. That's what Jesus did. When he rose from the dead, he walked through the wall, appeared to his disciples, breathed on them, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit of God came into them, they were resurrected. That was the born again experience. You can have the same experience today. The breath of God can come into you, transform and change you, turn you into another person, and give you the assurance of salvation. Give you the assurance of heaven as if you were already there. Today, God's calling you. Can you hear him knocking on the door of your heart? I want you to pray with me right now. Stop what you're doing, please. Just take a moment. Stop everything. And pray this prayer out loud from your heart. Just repeat after me, please. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. You bled and died for me upon the cross. You rose again from the dead. Come into my life. I give you my life. Forgive me every evil thing. Resurrect me from the dead. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And all that you did on that cross, you did it for me. And I willfully receive you today. And today I become a child of God. The Bible says in John 1, 12, that we must receive him. And those that receive him, they become the children of God. If you just prayed that, pray with me. Please let me know. Just simply type in the comment section. Say, I prayed the prayer. I gave my heart to Christ. I received the Savior. And I want to rejoice with you today. God bless you. And welcome to the family. And Father, I pray for everyone that has prayed that prayer today live, those that have prayed that prayer watching the recorded broadcast, that, Lord, you have make yourself real to them, breathe the breath of life into them, and raise them from the dead. And I thank you for them, God, in Jesus' mighty name. And all those that agree said amen. And amen to God be the praise. Now, listen, you're watching this program. I want to check through, just take a moment, scroll through. I know many of you are watching. I'm looking for any prayer requests today. Please type in your prayer request. Welcome, Rashid. God bless you. Welcome from France. So nice to have you and Kat watching. I'm just scrolling through for a moment, looking for any prayer requests today. At this point, I'm not seeing any prayer requests. So I want to make sure we cover that. Pray for any people that have a request today. So maybe you're watching. You see, I need a miracle. I've tuned in because this is called your miracle moment. Well, if you prayed the prayer to receive Jesus, 
That's the ultimate miracle. But maybe there's a sickness, a disease, a germ, a virus, an ailment, a plague, a malady, a malfunction in your body. You know, the Bible teaches us that faith is what pleases God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So right now, you need a miracle? You tuned in for a miracle? I want to ask you to do some acts of faith. Number one, I want you to lift your hands up like this. Just a simple gesture. But it's an act of faith toward God. Secondly, I want you to say this out loud. Lord Jesus Christ. I come to you. For my deliverance. I believe. That you Lord Jesus. Paid the price for my healing. For my miracle. For my deliverance. Lord Jesus. Just ask him. Lord Jesus. I ask you to touch me now. Heal me now. Deliver me now. Free me now. And I believe and I receive from you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, I agree with you right now, friend. I agree with you according to Matthew 18, 19. Right now, as an act of your faith, I want you to take your left hand, place it on your body, matter where you place, anywhere, just touch yourself and raise your right hand to heaven. And I want to minister healing to you right now by faith in the name of Jesus, wherever you are in the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as an ambassador of the king and his kingdom, I take absolute authority over every demonic, evil, wicked, twisted spirit. I take my position and my office in the kingdom. And I command and demand that every foul and unclean, evil, demonic entity be bound up and cast out of every person watching now in the authority of Jesus' name. I command every demonic entity, foul, unclean, spirits of sickness, disease, germ, virus, ailment, plague, malady, and malfunction to come out to release God's people and let them go. I release by faith the working of miracles. I release by faith the gifts of healings. I release by faith the healing anointing. I release by faith the miracle anointing. I curse the root seeds, fruits, and offspring of every sickness, disease, germ, virus, ailment, plague, malady, and malfunction. I command every evil, wicked disease to die. Dissipate, dissolve, and dematerialize and never rematerialize again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say rise and be healed now in the authority of Jesus' name. Now, as an act of your faith, I'm going to count to three. When I say three, I want you to begin to do what you could not do. When I say three, move that part of your body. Twist it, turn it, bend it, see through it, listen out of it. Do what you could not do. I make a demand on your faith. One, two, three, do it now. Do it now. Move your body. Check your body. Test your body. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in miracles. I believe that God has touched you. I am expecting to hear miraculous reports right here today. Somebody felt fire go through their body. Somebody felt a cool breeze blow over them. Somebody felt like a hand come upon you. The pain is gone. Something is moving freely now. Your ear is open. Your eye can see. Your shoulders released. That's the touch of God. 
right now. Type in your miracle testimony. Tell us what God has done for you today. Come on, the Bible says faith without works is dead. I'm encouraging you right now, right now, right now. Tell us what God has done for you. Check your body, test your body, and find the miracle has come. I'm expecting to hear from you today. But as I'm waiting, I'm going to give you an awesome opportunity right now to make an investment in the kingdom of God. Oh, you can donate today. You can give an offering, a tithe. You can sow a seed. Make an investment. At JDK Ministries, you can do this today through PayPal. That's paypal.me forward slash my name, Dr. John David Kirby. Simple, easy way to give into the ministry through PayPal. Paypal.me forward slash Dr. John David Kirby. You can visit our website, jdkministries.com, the forward slash and the word donations. You can make a one-time gift, a one-time offer, one-time donation, or you can also find out how you can become one of our Gideon 300. These are our precious ministry partners today. You can become part of the JDK ministry family by joining up on our monthly partner program. All the information is there, simple, easy to understand format. JDKMinistries.com, the forward slash, and the word donations. We have just introduced a new giving format for those that understand and know the Venmo platform. We have just introduced that to our ministry for giving. You can give, just simply go on the Venmo app under JDK Ministries, Inc., and you can make your donation there today. So I'm encouraging you to make an investment partner with the prophet today. And believe God for the partner's blessing and the prophet's reward. Well, I'm still waiting today to hear what God has done for you. Because I know he has touched many people today. So as you're giving, I pray God will bless you. Multiply your seed sown. And increase it back to you 30, 60, and 100 times what you have sown today. Also, please take a moment. Check out our YouTube channel. We are building quite a library now of teachings, various interpretations. We have French, Russian, German. Our School of the Prophet, School of the Apostle, this Your Miracle Moment program. Check out and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just very simple. Click on the YouTube app or open the browser window on your computer on YouTube. Type in Dr. John David Kirby and be sure to subscribe. And when you check out the YouTube channel, please be sure to check out the playlists. We have playlists for every one of our individual programs. And we'd love to have you subscribe so that you can be up to date on all we're doing here at JDK Ministries. Now, talking about being up to date, be sure to join the JDK Ministries email list so that you can be up to date on all that we're doing, to be a part of where we're going to be ministering live, updates, things that we're doing here at JDK Ministries. But you have to email me at jdkministries33 at gmail.com. So join the JDK Ministries email list today. That's jdkministries33 at gmail.com. And I just want to take a moment to thank and welcome all of our JDK Ministries Covenant Partner family. God bless you, precious partners. It's you that help us do what we do to impact nations. 
Yes, through the internet ministry, traveling ministry, sending financial assistance to ministries that we are in covenant relationship with in many nations of the world. And I want to decree and declare over to you, prophet partners today, great is your reward. Please take a moment and share this program. Share this program with your friends, your social media platforms, so that we can get the message of salvation to as many people as we can. You know, one of the earmarks of this particular program, Your Miracle Moment, is not just prayer for the sick or ministering healing or releasing miracles. It's salvation that we actually give people an opportunity to give their life to Jesus right there in their home or on their phone or wherever they're watching. They can pray the prayer of salvation. So that is something so vital that we give people an opportunity to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And we do that here. It's a priority. Souls are a priority in JDK Ministries. So thank you in advance for sharing the soul winning teaching miracle program. And I appreciate your love and your assistance for the glory of God. Well, I am Dr. John David Kirby. It's been an honor, as always, a pleasure, true privilege to be able to share the word of God with you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. It's always such a blessing to hear. Uh, for many of you that are typing in, telling me where you're typing in from, where you're watching from. Janice, nice to have you. Cricket, nice to have you. Thank you for joining me. And I want to just declare over you today. You are not going under. You are going over. Because God is for you. And if God be for you, who could be against you? So I'm Dr. John David Kirby reminding you that God is for you. So until we meet again, either right back here for another online broadcast or perhaps in a meeting in your area in the very near future, check out our jdkministries.com schedule page. That's right, jdkministries.com schedule to see where we will be in the very near future. So thank you once again for joining me. May God bless you. Have a prosperous, successful, and blessed week in Jesus' powerful and mighty name.